Hello, St. Rock. On today's segment of Art Rocks, we are going to be doing a painting um, in the style of one of my favorite artists, whose name is Vincent Van Gogh. So our finished product will look something like this. This is um, to imitate one of his paintings that's called Starry Night. And I'll tell you a little bit about Vincent Van Gogh and about this painting um, in a minute, once we kind of give our background paint a little bit of time to dry. Um, so for today's project, you will need a piece of paper. Um, I'm going to be using paints. If you don't have paints, then, you know, give this a try with crayons or markers or color pencils or whatever you have. Um, and a paintbrush, maybe a cup of water to rinse off your brush. Um, but other than that, I think that should be it. So I'm going to go ahead and take my paintbrush and dip it into my blue here. And this whole entire background pretty much is going to be blue. So go ahead and just get your blue and paint over the entire background. You might want to set like some newspaper or some paper down in the background. That way you can really take your paint all the way to the edge and not get paint all over your parents' table. You don't have to go all the way down to the bottom because the bottom part of this is actually gonna be black, but I would go at least until about there. And make sure, again, you're going all the way to the edges. You want to really make sure that you're filling in so like I don't know if you can see there's a little bit of white here make sure you're just filling in all of that space so there's really no white peeking through I'm gonna take down just a little bit further there Okay, if you're not finished with this part yet, you can just pause me and then uh, try to catch up. I'm gonna go on to the next section. So I'm gonna take my little paint palette here and I'm gonna mix a lighter blue. So in order to mix blue, you're gonna just take a little bit of your blue and mix it in with your white. I'm gonna save some of my white though. I'm not gonna use the whole thing. So you're gonna make just a lighter shade of this. And if you need to go back and get more white, you can. I think I'm going to make mine a little bit whiter. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you're going to start on the edge here. And you're going to make just one swirl, kind of going across like that. And it's okay if your blue is not all the way dry. This, for this part, it does not matter. We can use we can go on top of our wet paint here. So you're gonna use this, make this kind of swirl pattern here. And then go over it again, just so that it's thickened up a little bit. And then starting kind of where you left off, we're gonna kind of make the swirl go to the other side. So I don't know if you can see all the way, there we go. So make it so that it's a little bit thicker. And we're gonna add some of Van Gogh's kind of, the, the, the type of brush stroke that he was popular for. We'll add that here in just a second. Okay, so while that dries just a little bit, we're gonna go back and add some yellow. We're gonna add first the moon. So this whole painting takes place at night. So the first thing you'll need to do I'm gonna take yellow and I'm gonna add just a little bit of white into my yellow and it kind of makes it, um, it kind of makes it pop a little bit more out in front of, or on top of the blue. So I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm gonna add, hopefully it is a little bit dry at least. It's okay if some of the blue sticks through because that is kind of more true to the style that he would have done. Um, so you're just gonna make this a circle right there. And then you're gonna take your orange and inside of this circle, you're gonna make kind of a half moon shape. Like
like the letter C and then kind of colored in. So it's really like half of a moon. And it's fine if your yellow kind of mixes in with that too. When you have finished with that, we're gonna go and we're gonna add a few of the stars. So to add your star for now, just make a little dot with your orange. I would maybe add anywhere between five and six. I wouldn't go too crazy with these because they are a lot of work. So I would add, yeah, five or six stars just with your orange. When you're done with that, you really don't even need to clean off your brush at this point. You're gonna go back to the yellow and you're gonna go to these stars and you're going to just add um, some strokes like that, little tiny dashes or lines around each of them. And you can add like one layer, you can even go out to do about there. And you're gonna do that with all of them, including the moon over here. You wanna make sure that your paintbrush is not going in circles around these, but that you're just doing short brush strokes, and that's really gonna be emulating the style of Vincent Van Gogh here. And then, like I said, don't forget to do your moon up here. Okay, when you're done with that, you can either wash off your brush. You don't actually have to, though. You're gonna take your white that is not mixed with anything at this point, and you're gonna do the same thing. So you can add kind of, it could be over the layer that you just did. You could also just make your own white strokes kind of going out from that center, from that center orange. So just a layer of white over it. Don't forget your moon also. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white also inside, kind of on the other side of the moon. There. And then at this point we're ready to come back and do some of the swirls. Actually before we do that, let's take that light blue that we used for this swirl. Um, if you have more and you're gonna do the exact same thing, you're gonna go over again, just another layer with light blue kind of around your little stars here. And your moon. Okay, once you have finished with that part, we're now we're, we're gonna come to back to the middle. So using your brush, you're gonna go back to the white and you're just gonna start adding some white strokes. Yeah, I think you can see that, okay. White strokes just throughout all of this. Now, it doesn't have to stay directly within this line if you wanna kinda of come up a little bit or down a little bit, that's fine too. This would kinda of be in Van Gogh's style anyway. So go ahead and add just a layer of white. You don't need to really keep washing off your brush or anything. If it has some blue that's mixed in with it, that's fine. And your other one too, your other blue streak here. And make sure you kind of take that all the way to the other side. Once you're here, you're gonna go back and do the blue that you used at the very beginning. So just like straight up blue, nothing added to it. And again, do the exact same thing, going over the light blue streak here. Oh, 
and your white will probably mix a little bit with that and that's fine too it kind of just adds almost like another shade of blue here okay when you're at a stopping point here you're going to take just a tiny tiny dab of black i don't know if you can see this is all the black i have well maybe about that much and you're going to add some blue so you're going to make basically a darker shade of blue than the one that we just were using don't use too much black you don't want it to be super black because we are going to add a lot of black here at the bottom but you're going to use um, do basically the same thing you just did add just a couple of these little blue darker blue lines throughout also Okay, now you are gonna to want to wash your brush off for this one. In a minute, I'll show you a close-up of the real Starry Night painting so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. But Van Gogh did add a few little shades of, or streaks of orange throughout this. I wouldn't do more than like six or seven. So just every once in a while, kind of add in this little light blue or what once was light blue streak, just add a little dash of orange in both the top one and the bottom one. And then do the same thing with yellow. Again, I probably wouldn't use more than like six or seven of those little just accents of color. Okay, we're gonna go back and get our big brushes out and paint the bottom part black. Now, in the foreground of this painting, there is a cypress tree, which is like kind of the iconic part of, of the foreground anyway. So we're gonna do that in a minute. We, I really want this part to dry up a little bit before we add that, but we can certainly start the black um, bottom part of our painting. So to paint the bottom, you're just, oh wait, hold on, don't do that yet. I forgot there is actually another light blue streak about right here. And that one's just gonna go across kind of like this. And the bottom part of this will be black, so you don't have to take it all the way down, but just about like that. And then go ahead and take your smaller brush and add some of those different shades of color like we did earlier at the top too. So just like the regular blue that you used for the black for the background. And some just plain white. And then the darker shade um, of blue that you had mixed with the black. And then this bottom streak actually has a little bit more yellow and orange in it than the top two streaks. So go ahead and add more of your yellow streaks throughout this one too. And then the same with the orange. Okay, now we can go on and do the bottom part in our black.
So we're just gonna add a layer of black kind of underneath and it can cut in a little bit to where you just were, but just a layer of black kind of at the bottom. And it can, it's gonna kind of represent some hills so it can be kind of bumpy or following the same pattern that your little light blue streak was following there. Okay, now we are at a stopping point for paint. We're gonna let it dry just a little bit before we move on and do our um, the, the foreground, the cypress tree. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about this painting and, and why I like this painting and why I like Van Gogh. Um, so Van Gogh, he was born in 1853. He was a Dutch, um, we call him a post-impressionist painter, kind of from the time period and the style that he was. He's probably the most, I think, the most influential painter um, or even artist who's ever lived. Throughout his life, he kind of had a, a few different jobs. He never really settled on, on one specific job. Um, he kind of was, was a floater. Like when he was in school, he, was, he had trouble focusing a lot um, and he much preferred to go out and go on long walks. Some people said that he probably walked anywhere between four and nine miles a day just so he could kind of be out in nature. He really loved, loved nature and you can see that in a lot of his paintings. Um, he actually didn't even start painting until he was 27 years old. Um, so in his lifetime, he, he died actually fairly young. He was only 37 when he died. So he really only had a 10 year span of paintings. Um, he only sold one painting during his life. Um, he sold it for about 400 francs at the time. So it would have been roughly about a thousand dollars, which isn't really a lot in the art world. So in contrast to that, in 1987, he's, um, one of his paintings, is, it was called The Sunflowers, and it sold for $62 million. Um, and it was the highest price a painting had been sold at that time that was from a modern artist. So not like Da Vinci or Michelangelo or some of like the old classic artists. Um, some of his other works have gone for over $80 million. So that uh, measly 1,000 that he got during his lifetime kind of um, doesn't even really compare. And I think it's kind of a little bittersweet that maybe maybe the greatest artist um, in the history of art didn't even um, understand how good he was and people didn't appreciate him and people didn't understand his artwork. Um, so like I said, he only painted for about 10 years. He died when he was 37, um, but despite that, he was still one of the most prolific artists, meaning that he put out more paintings than, than almost anybody. So he had over 900 paintings in his lifetime, in his 10 years of painting, um, which equates to almost four per week, which in the art world, that is actually a lot of paintings to do in one week. Um, unfortunately, he suffered from mental illness. He had a few mental illnesses, um, he suffered probably from depression, from schizophrenia, he had epilepsy, so he kind of led a hard life. And he spent some of his time um, in a hospital, or he would have called it an asylum. Um, and while he was in that asylum, he painted the, the picture that, that we're doing today, the Starry Night painting. Um, he actually didn't like the painting, the, the final product of his painting, he thought it was kind of a failure. So I think that goes to show, um, to show us how we maybe view ourselves or how we look at, look at our own works. If Van Gogh thought that one of his best known pieces was a failure, then um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a shame because we look at it and, and most people love this painting. He died in 1890, um, and after he passed away, his sister-in-law kind of gathered all of all of his paintings that you know people didn't even know about, and um, she kind of saw something in him and in those paintings. So she compiled them and gave them to um, her son, and so they started a museum, the Van Gogh Museum, which you could still visit today in Amsterdam. Um, so I'm going to show you a close-up of what, not <laughs> Mrs. Elam's painting is, but what the real-life um, Starry Night would look like, and then kind of go over a little bit of, of that with you while we are waiting a little bit longer for our painting here to dry. You could also just Google Starry Night and probably get a better uh, view of what I'm talking about here. 
So this painting, Starry Night, today it estimates at about $1 million would be what it was worth. So in comparison to the $1,000 painting that he sold, this one would be worth $100 million. Sorry. Um, and this scene is of a small village in a background underneath um, the moonlit sky. In the foreground here, we see the big cypress tree. Um, and at the center of the village, if you can see, there's a little, there's a little church with a steeple. Um, religion played a big part in Van Gogh's works. Some see this painting as Van Gogh's interpretation of, of God protecting his people. And not only was Van Gogh a religious person, but in this work and in many of his works, you can see the beauty of God's creation throughout. I like this painting because it really draws you in. And he has, Van Gogh has a style of the interesting brush strokes um, that people hadn't really done before. He was the first one. He painted this while he was at an asylum or the hospital. And so some people think that maybe this could be like what he saw out of his bedroom window um, as he was kind of looking out of his hospital window. He painted this in 1889, so just one year before he died. And I think what I like best about, about Van Gogh was despite, you know, the trials that he faced in his life, despite his pain and his mental illness, he was really able to transform that into something beautiful and something truly magnificent. So that's why I like Van Gogh. Hopefully I've talked long enough that our painting has dried a little bit. If not, you could just pause me and uh, wait maybe 10 minutes, but we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish up here. So we're gonna draw this cypress tree that's in, in the foreground of our painting. So using a smaller brush, if you have one, if not, you can just use your other brush, that's fine. You're gonna start kind of near the top and just make one stick kind of going down. And then we're gonna kind of thicken that up, make it kind of come down a little bit more on this side. Oh yeah, my white's starting to bleed through here. And go ahead and paint that, color that in. So it's more of like a, a pointed tree at this point. At this point, we're gonna come about here, and just kind of make a branch, and do the same thing probably about right here. You're gonna take these branches and just bring them all the way down to the where you did the black earlier. And color them in, paint them in. It is okay if some of your color bleeds through because if you're looking really closely at Starry Night, you could see that he did add um, a little bit of brown in his. And then do the same thing, just make that kind of come all the way down. And we're almost done. We're just gonna add every few places, kind of just like a little extra branch to our, to our cypress tree. You don't have to add too many. Um, Okay, so that is my starry night in the style of Vincent Van Gogh. Um, email me or send me a text or a picture of yours when you finish it. I look forward to seeing what you make.